Thank you, Danny. Thank you for that nice introduction. I'm very happy and very pleased to have this opportunity to be with you. It's too bad that I'm not in person, but I hope I'll be there in person next time. But I doubt, you know, because uh, Justin Trudeau with his uh, vaccine passport for Canadian travelers, it would be uh, very hard for me to travel at the end of the, this month. So, but that being said, uh, the equalization, I think it's a very important subject. And yes, if you look at the data right now, the money in the equalization formula is $21 billion. Quebec received this year, will receive this year $13 billion. And, uh, new, uh, uh, and also New Brunswick will receive $2.5 billion. So per capita, uh, New Brunswick is the province that, re that uh, received the most uh, equalization money. That being said, that formula exists since 1957, and that was put in the Constitution in 1982. In the Constitution, what you have, you don't have the amount of money that the federal government must give to other provinces. You have only a principle. The principle is we have equalization formula in Canada to be sure that every Canadian uh, living in uh, Alberta or in Quebec or in uh, Newfoundland, they will have the same kinds of public services by their government. So yes, it's a redistribution of wealth from uh, rich provinces to poor provinces. That being said, with that referendum, I think the question is not the right one, but the question about abolishing the equalization formula uh, it would be very hard and maybe impossible to do that in Canada because you will need to reopen the constitution. You will need to have seven provinces representing 50% of the population that will agree with that. And as you know, there's a lot of provinces, have not provinces that won't agree with that. And I don't believe that the federal government and also the official opposition in Ottawa, the Conservative Party of Canada, I don't believe that they want a debate on the equalization. We are the only national political party that is ready to have the discussion. We decided to speak about that because it's important for the prosperity of our country, but also for the unity of our country. And I understand the frustration of Albertans and Western Canadians. You have a right to be frustrated and not happy with the situation. We, but we can change the formula and we don't need, uh, no, we can change the formula, but we cannot abolish the equalization, the principle in the constitution. So our position on that, it's that formula is unfair. And who is in charge of the formula? It is the federal government. It is a decision that can be done by the cabinet, a cabinet meeting. Actually, when I was a minister under upper, the upper government changed the formula to be more generous to have not provinces and to Quebec. And we changed the formula. We had a cabinet meeting at nine o'clock a.m. And at 12 o'clock, we had a new formula. So you don't need to pass a legislation. You don't need to pass a regulation. You don't need to have any agreement with provinces to change the formula. So that's the position of the PPC. We need to change that formula and to be less generous because now it's a poverty trap. Quebec received equalization money since 1957. Do you really believe that Quebec is a poor province? No, and Quebecers know also that Quebec is not a poor province. Why Quebec received equalization since 1957? It's because of the formula. The energy coming from the industry uh, like hydroelectricity and the energy coming from oil and gas that's uh, not the same. It's not the same in the formula. Oil and gas and all the revenue and incomes coming from oil and gas, it is part of the formula. All the revenue and incomes coming from hydroelectricity, it is not part of the formula. That's why Quebec is a poor province. We have a lot of hydroelectricity and you have a lot of oil and gas. Quebec is a poor province and you are supposed to be a rich province and you were a rich province. Now it's more difficult for, me, for you and I'll understand that. So what the federal government can do, they can change the formula and to be less generous, instead of giving 
21 billion dollars every year to have not provinces, we can give a million dollars. We can give two million dollars and change the formula. And to be fair, to be fair for every province and that formula, it's unfair because that's a big incentive for have not provinces to have a big government at the provincial level with higher taxes and they don't have any incentive to develop their natural resources because if they do that, they would be richer. And if they're richer, they will receive less equalization money. So there's no incentive. That's why we need to change that and being less generous. And that would be the right incentive for them to develop their own natural resources. Having a smaller government at the financial level that must lower their taxes to create more economic growth. So the referendum, I think it was important to have a referendum on the equalization. What would be the impact? I believe that uh, the referendum that would be a yes, about at 60%. I was reading the news yesterday and today. The official uh, result, I believe, will know that Monday. I believe that it would be about 60%. That would be good for Alberta, and that would be good for Canada also, because you will try, and you are trying right now, to put that subject uh, in the debate in Ottawa. I spoke about that the first election in 2019, and I spoke about that in 20, the last election, 2021. And I will speak about that at the next election. We are doing politics differently. We have a platform and we'll speak always the same platform, we won't change. So the good news is it may be on the agenda for politicians. And as you know, the Conservative Party of Canada never, never, never spoke about that. And I hope that we'll push for a debate in Ottawa. I don't believe that the, uh, the, the equalization would be abolished. But maybe if it's a, a yes at 60%, I hope that the Trudeau government or the opposition, the official opposition right now, that they didn't say nothing about that because they are doing politics by polling and they want to have support in Quebec and in Atlantic Canada. So they don't want to have a real discussion about that. I had that discussion when I was in New Brunswick in 2019 at the election. And I said, we must be less generous. We must abolish that. And the answer from the CBC journalist was, Mr. Bernier, do you know that 50% of our budget in New Brunswick, it's coming from the equalization formula. So you are saying to New Brunswick that you will cut their budget that 15% and you want to have some support here in New Brunswick? And I said, yes. I said, yes, because it's important to do that. And I don't believe that New Brunswick is a poor province. You have a lot of natural resources there. And, you know, we'll do that with a transition period. We need to have the discussion because the formula is on, it's unfair. And it's the same thing. I'm coming from Quebec and I said the same thing that I'm not proud to be a Quebecer when we receive the equalization money and when Quebec is supposed to be a poor province. We need to change that. We need to have an adult discussion in Canada like I had uh, since uh, we created the PPC. And I'm very pleased that you had that referendum. And I hope we'll have a debate. I don't believe that the liberals will change the formula. I don't believe that the conservative will change the formula, but we will always speak about that because we know it's unfair for you. So uh, it's the same thing for uh, the, the independents. You have the Wild Rose Independent Party. That's an option for you at the provincial level. But in the meantime, you will always have to vote at the federal level and I'm very pleased that we have a lot of support in Alberta at the last campaign. Uh, we had an average of 9% in Alberta, all together across the country, 5%. And we, there's some writings where our candidates came second and third in Alberta. So I'm very pleased with that. And we will always fight for, for Western Canadians, but also for all Canadians, because I understand. And I think Paul is right about that. If nothing happened, this country won't exist in five years or 10 years. And if Alberta is leaving the, 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 the country, the Canada won't exist anymore. And that's why it's important to have the discussion. You need to have the same power than Quebec. You know, you need to have your own police force, your own pension plan. You need to be able to do what you want to do in healthcare. Actually in healthcare, the transfer this year will be $43 billion 
and our proposal about that, healthcare is a provincial jurisdiction and you must be able to raise the money for, for your own responsibility. But the GST in Canada, the revenue and income that the federal government is receiving from the GST, it's $41 billion this year. So our proposal on healthcare, we must give you the GST. Why Canada will tax you and after that, take that and give that to provinces with conditions? We must give all the GST and you'll be in charge to raise the tax from the GST. You'll have your own, your own way to raise ta ta the tax, the GST, and you'll be able to decide if you want to put more money in healthcare or if you want to have more private delivery. So that's the solution. We have a great constitution. The problem is politicians, establishment politicians in Ottawa don't respect the constitution. And that's why you have an independentist party in Alberta that is growing 40% of support, something like that, 47%. I believe these are numbers. And that's why I, you have to do what you need to do at the provincial level. But what I'm asking you is help us at the federal level. And I believe that you can be an independentist and vote for the Wild Rose Party at the provincial level and vote for us at the federal level at the next election, maybe in two years or three years, because we have the solution for this country. All our platform is a radical decentralization. And by doing that, we are respecting the constitution and all our proposal, there's nothing about reopening the constitution. It's all about respecting. And when you do that, you give a radical decentralization. You have a radical decentralization and you give more autonomy to provinces. But we don't have that. And I believe that if you don't have that in Alberta, I strongly believe that the independence will be your solution. So thank you very much for giving me this time. And I'm very pleased to have the discussion with uh, Andrew and Paul. And thank you, Danny, for inviting me tonight.